Are you ready to be the best that you can be? Join hybrid business coach and consultant Charity Brown and her guest as they give you behind the scenes access to the insider tips and tricks that will help you take your business to the next level. Charity has an extraordinary approach to boosting businesses to break out of their modes, influence their industries, and become leaders of their packs. And she's ready to pass this inspiring knowledge on to you today. Learn how to change your game and build your business into what you've always dreamed of, right here on the Create Clarity with Charity Podcast. Hello and welcome to Create Clarity with Charity. Today, I have an amazing guest. The one and only David Drebin, Dreamscapes photographer, best known for all his limited edition artworks and uh, really helping create branding um, for some major iconic brands that we all know very well, like Mercedes, MTV, Nike, Coca-Cola, and so on. Welcome, David. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Yes. So tell me about you and about your entrepreneur as a creative. Like we all know that that space is very complicated to really generate the kind of audience that you have and success as an artist. So let's talk about your entrepreneurial spirit. When did that first start? So I found photography in the early 90s and What I had to my advantage is that I never thought about any competition with anything other than my own reflection. And I think a lot of times people get frustrated to just start being an entrepreneur because they start thinking about how difficult it is and how crowded it is and how it's literally impossible. And I realized quickly that impossible just meant I'm possible. Yes. And a lot of people don't and a lot of people don't don't realize that. And the hardest part is the battle within your imagination about what the competition really is. So you have to create value to other people. Mm-hmm. But first you have to believe in yourself, which is the it's harder sometimes for people to believe in themselves than to understand the value that they're creating for other people. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of times people do have blocks uh, with success because of mindset, right? You know, playing small, not feeling worthy, not feeling good enough, not feeling talented enough, not knowing enough, right? So during that time of when you're taking your creatives and monetizing them instead of just making it a passion, you know, did you have coaches and mentors to help steer your mindset? I've had a lot of mentors along the way. But one thing I realized is not to chase, but to attract. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're chasing, you're, you're spinning your wheels. It's like chasing butterflies, but I'd rather build a garden and have the butterflies all land in my beautiful garden. Yes. That's easier said than done. So is that a mental shift or is that more technology and like having the right team? It's all mental. You, You have to have a talent for having your mind overpower your emotions and oftentimes our emotions overpower our mind so it really all starts from from here up mm-hmm. you have to it's it's you're you're we're in a constant battle with our mind and our emotions and our emotions and our mind and the but mind has to out outwit the emotions and you have to know what you want to do where you want to go and how you're going to do what you want to do and where you want to go. It all comes down to having a vision for yourself and not caring about what other people think, but also providing value to other people. What is the value that you are providing with other people is the key to all business and the key to all entrepreneurship. And then the time and patience and relentless perseverance. So how did you do that to help establish your powerful brand to get in front of iconic brands like Mercedes-Benz, MTV, Nike, and Coca-Cola, just to name a couple? I mean, well, what? How, how did you mentally prime yourself and not let your emotions psych you out? Well, those brands that you mentioned were brands that I worked for 20 years ago. Oh, got it. So these are, these, when I used to do commercial photography, those were the brands that, that had hired me. But I found that doing commercial photography, you get hired for a day and then and then you're just done. And there's not a lot of repeat business when it comes to being a service in the commercial photography space. So 
I'm actually more of a failed commercial photographer because that business really kind of dried up when the internet started to really explode. And mm. I realized that I'd rather create a product than be a service. So I went from being a failed commercial photographer to wanting to make my own work and build. I wanted to be the brand and not work for the brand that wasn't loyal to me because I'm loyal to me. Yeah, but I don't expect others to be loyal to me. Mm -hmm. So that's very true in corporate. Okay. So that's a very key point audience, because we talk about that a lot is establishing other people's businesses with our agencies, but not focusing on personal branding or branding ourselves and really dialing into the emotionality of our own brand. Right. So going off of what David just said as a failed corporate photographer, right. Taking your own creative and building your own brand. What was that first step that you had to take to break out of that into your own medium? The key for me is to always build teams around me who could do things better than I can do myself. So if I didn't think I was the best at doing something, I would branch out and hire people to do those things for me. Mm -hmm. And that's been very important to surround yourself with the right people and building teams. You can't do this alone. You have to find the, you have to have a talent. You have to find the right people to help you execute your talent. Yeah. At scale, at scale. Yes. And delegation, right? Because you, we can't wear all the hats. I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs are notorious for, you know, CEO, chief, everything officer. They do it all. They're doing the leads. They're doing the automations. They're setting up their websites and they're also servicing their clients because to let go of control, and to be able to delegate is one of those things that's a mental thing and emotionality, fear can stop people from, um, you know, kind of learning how to do that or giving themselves permission to have someone else do it for them. So in the beginning, was it like, was there already a team or a mentor or a coach or a branding or a partner that said, hey, look, you know, Corporate photography is going down, man. We need to take what you're really good at and we need to set up a website and set up some automation and some offers and some value. Or did you frame that all out yourself? Well, I still think it's just the beginning now. <laughs> so it was, it was, yeah. Every day is a new day to recreate yourself. So I've never felt successful. I've always had a vision and I have so many voices in my mind talking to me as the you and everyone else that is alive as a human being. We have so many tabs open in our minds at all times that I'm constantly just dealing with the tabs of my imagination and fulfilling what my purpose is in the world and for the universe. So I just well, let's go, always let's go knew to how to website. do this. So, because you do have an amazing website and your your art and all your amazing, um, you know, exhibits that you've done. So you're branded now as you are your brand. How long did that take you to get this far to be able to be in these high end galleries and and do what you really love and and making really good money at it? I realized in the early 2000s that it wasn't going to work out for me commercially because that business was slowly dying. So instead of being hired by the brands, I realized that I was the brand myself. So this all really started for me in, in the early 2000s when I had an exhibition at a very well-known gallery in Los Angeles. And then I started to branch out and have shows all over the world. So it started in LA and then I, then I found a gallery in Berlin and then Brussels and Paris and London. I, I literally have been traveling around the world on tour since 2004. Oh, I found wow. a publisher. I found a publisher who would publish all the books that I wanted, distribute them all over the world. It really comes down to four things as a creative person. You have to have creativity, packaging your creativity, distributing your creativity, and promoting your creativity, creativity, distribution, PR, and packaging, and not mm -hmm. in any specific order, but you need those four qualities at the highest level imaginable. Yeah. And then, and so you delegated a lot of those tasks to the professionals to help you sustain that and really create a powerful brand. So 
was this this personal branding because in 2000s the early 2000s I mean personal branding was not a thing like it is more now so than ever right so were you always branded when you broke out from corporate as your name the artist David I never I, I, I never thought about corporate I never thought about branding I just knew that I had I was on a mission mm -hmm. and so looking back because I do a lot of podcasts looking back people ask me these questions. When did you realize that you were branding yourself? And it just looking back, I realized it, but at the time I was just doing what I was meant to do in life. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I never did this to be cool. I did this because I have a lot to say and I feel like my images and the art that I create would have far more impact than my words. So instead of talking, I just made, images and my images spoke to people all over the world yes I love your exhibits I'm really into physique and women's you know art and I like all the femme fatales and the falling lady sculptures that's just so magnificent it's a really classic um so that's great I mean my audience really I mean that's the thing click, Maybe click on didn't... not now click on not now on, on your screen you got that see Where? that's the mailing list the mailing list right there in the bottom right corner it says not now click on not now no up it says the right there there's go to the right there you go there we go that was my mailing list yeah okay looks good on your site it looks good yeah it looks it looks really nice so everyone audience hey check out daviddrebin.com and that's d a v i d d r e b i n.com and he his artworks are on here his galleries his books his podcasts his press i mean all the amazing things that it really takes to stand out as a personally branded uh influence in this space because there's lots of competition right so not only do you also create amazing art but you also have to be able to market it and brand it so it appeals um so how do you do that where is your focus on right now galleries um shows like you you mentioned like having your art all over the world is that um or is it really just giving back and creating podcasts and books and leaving a legacy for you right now what is your main focus? It's kind of none of those things, actually. For, for me, it's really about executing my vision and finding the right partnerships and teams all over the world. I have a new book that's just coming out now, and I'm organizing shows all over the world. So I'm, I'm working with PR teams. I'm working with party planners. I'm working with marketing teams. And we're literally doing this in Berlin and London and Paris and Miami and New York in my hometown of Toronto. So... It's all about believing it in your mind first and then reaching out to all the people and providing value and giving them opportunities to be a part of something bigger than themselves. That's the key for me. I love that. That's the true evolutionary entrepreneur. What I talk about on Create Clarity with Charity is really about the entrepreneur giving back, saying, hey, I've been doing this a long time. These are the best things for an artist to do here's my framework. So is that what you give away here in the flirting with danger? What is the key takeaways for the audience to know why they need to come get this book? Well, the key for me is I've never introduced myself as a photographer. I've never introduced myself as an artist ever to anybody. For me, it's always been about creating a brand and promoting the imagery and the products through the right distribution networks in the right settings all over the world. I love that. So, and you do that, you do that for yourself, but you don't like consult on that or offer that as a service or have like a webinar or masterclass that helps people do that. Do you? I really, I really should have a masterclass because I think a lot of people are clueless about how to actually do this. That yeah. my dream is to have a masterclass and to do a Ted talk because <laughs> I love public speaking. I love helping people with big dreams. I have such an issue with wasted talent and people who have big dreams who don't go for it, who just settle. And people always ask me, when are you gonna settle down? And my two least, least favorite words, my two least favorite words are settle and down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I can't imagine ever settling down. I, I don't, don't like settle those two down. Words. Let's turn settle. it up. Yeah, settle and down. 
So okay. I've always had a vision for myself and what I want to say and how I want to get the vision out there in the world. The two most important things are building a band and creating an audience for the band that you built. Yeah. So, and that's what goes into like, you know, some really strategic psychological branding knowledge, right? Like as you, you were talking about emotionality, emotionality drives sales. So your branding has to tap into the emotionality of your audience, right? Which then taps into their thoughts, which then taps into their subconscious mind, which then makes them click the link to buy. So let's talk about some of those key things that I know you probably want to talk about in your master classes about building a brand of influence and really taking things to the next level is the emotionality and the thought, right? How do you want to come off to your audience? Do you want them to, you know, feel a certain emotion? So what would you say the most powerful emotion you can use to get people to become an influencer in their space with branding? You ready? Yeah. Two words, no pressure. Mm. So when I have gallery exhibitions all over the world, I think about the branding opportunity. I'm not thinking about the sales. I expect to have an exhibition and make no sales ever because then I'm not disappointed. And any sale I make is only a bonus. If mm -hmm. I had to go to every one of my exhibitions and make people feel like I'm thirsty, please buy, please buy my work. I'm desperate. I'm needy. Please. They'd never buy the work. So mm -hmm. I don't put any pressure on anybody ever to ever buy my work. I just want to make people feel great. And it's all about the branding opportunity for me. If you do what you love, the money will always come. But if you think about the money, then you may not be loving what you're doing except getting money. And money was never my goal. Mm. My goal was always branding and the money comes as a result of winning with the branding. So what emotion do you think your brand brings? Like, is it excitement? Is it sexy? Is it, you know, fear, or anger? Like, what is the one that you notice? Like when you focus on that one, like, at, let's look at this sliding lady down the pedestal or down the, the stairwell, right? Like that's like kind of excitement, fun, daring, right? Like, the most of your art is like earthworms, right? And my, my 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 goal is for the girls to want to be the girl in the picture, and for the guys to want to meet the girl in the picture. That's always been my goal. Okay, and so that's that's um that taps into your subconscious, like, right? Um, subconsciously, you want to appeal to them because they want to be like that person in the picture or to feel like how that person looks in the picture, right? So the most powerful piece that you have, what what do you think it evokes? Do you have I don't one? look at, I, I don't really look at a particular powerful piece because the images that that I always thought would be very popular may not ever have been popular and the ones that I thought were just mediocre became my most popular images so you just like a chef who makes a menu you never know what people want to order off the menu so you mm -hmm. just make a menu for everybody and mm -hmm. then you make sure that everybody sees the menu and then you take the orders as you show the menu to the world the key is visibility and mm -hmm to build the audience once you've built the band. Cool. And what is your secret to building an awesome audience? Working with people who have the audience. <laughs> yes, that's so cool. Rubbing elbows with the right people. That's awesome. Everyone heard that out there. And definitely your successes with your podcast have been amazing as well. So that's kind of what we do here. We like to put on the the, the the people that want the audience and, you know, the audience that wants them. So for our business owners and entrepreneurs out there that are trying to, you know, tap into their creative, maybe they are an amazing artist, or maybe they, you know, have always had um, a passion for photography. What would you tell them if they're feeling self-doubt and not really stepping into that powerful mindset? If you're not willing to be scared every single day, 
but at the same time, incredibly confident of your own abilities and to be able to overcome that fear, then this is not the right space for you to be an entrepreneur. But if you want security where you can get a steady paycheck, you're just working for somebody else's dreams. So you either work for somebody else's dreams for a paycheck or you work for your own dreams with no security. And that's the riddle that people have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So bust through the fear folks, right? Like don't let fear stop you. Um, because charity, charity, this is one thing that one of my subjects many years ago, when I was photographing the person who managed the statue of Liberty, and as we were in a boat, just the manager of the Statue of Liberty and all the tours that came there, he looked at the Statue of Liberty and said to me, there is no freedom in security, but there is security in freedom. Mm, I love that. So yeah, folks, be free, right? Like let yourself free to express your own creative and get out there and don't let fear stop you. That's what I'm getting from you, David. And that's a powerful statement. Like, you know, then the true fulfillment happens, right? Like you're saying, it's not monetizing it. It's loving it and doing it because you love it. If you do what you love, the money will always come. I know so many people who chase the money and they never make it. They want fast money. But the fast money never came for me. It's been a slow grind for many years. So, you know, how to succeed in any industry, because that's pretty much like your main point to hit home with, right? Being able to establish yourself as a powerful brand in any industry, not just art, not just your creative. So would that be the same thing as just, you know, the first step is to just get rid of the fear? I wouldn't say the first step is to get rid of the fear. I would say the first step is to figure out what you want to do with your life and provide value to others in the world. It all comes down to what is your value? What is your skill set? How are you going to make other people feel great with the value that you create for those people. Awesome. And you've written, what is this, over 10 books here? There's like one, two, three. Well, those, four, are, all, those are all photographic books. And I actually okay. would love to write a book, but I think people are so impatient at reading because they're always so distracted by social media that those are photo, like photo art books with, oh, with large, large scale photographs. And I've done a book on neons as well. So. Yeah, your neon installations. That was that's another cool niche that you really tapped into. Where's the coolest spot you have your neons at? I've got my neons in many shows around the world, but our greatest success has been showing them at Art Miami during Art Basel because that's where the crowds are. That's where the audience is. So it's all about finding the right venue and finding the right audience. And Art Miami during Art Basel has been huge for me for two decades. Awesome. And that is so cool. So the number one thing right now is your, your books, your new book just came out, your opera. How do people get in contact with you? What is the best way if they want to learn more about how to, you know, influence their brand and impact the world by their creatives? Well, right there, daviddrebin.com. And I have a section called Drebinology, which shows the magic behind the madness. And my Instagram at David Drebin. But the most important thing for anyone listening is to provide value to other people over a sustained period of time. So you become classic and not the new hot trend. Yes, become classic, not the new hot trend. Yes, originality, right? And originality that speaks to people's emotions. Um, so I, I love it that you're here. I guess you're in New York right now. Thank you so much for taking time. And if you have some key insights, maybe to help, you know, uh, give somebody some inspiration, do you have like a, like a mantra or a website or someone or a book that just really influenced you throughout your career that might steer people in the right direction? 
just listen to that really quiet voice when it's silent that's speaking to you and telling you who you are and what you should do with your life. It's, it, it's, a, it's a gut. It's in your gut. And it's a quiet mm-hmm. voice that you have to be silent to be able to hear it. The more silent your mind is, the louder that voice becomes directing you with the vision for your life. Hmm. I love that. So yeah, meditate on that folks and really dial into what feels good to you, right? Exploring your creative and becoming a powerful force to be reckoned with isn't just rainbows and butterflies, but it's a journey. So be kind to you and Remember, like he was saying, it's all in our heads. It all starts with the mind, right? Like emotions drive your thoughts. So be sure to be kind to yourself and to think big, right, David? (laughs) Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here, David. I appreciate your time. Everyone, once again, check him out, daviddrebin.com. He has his dust collection, his chasing paradise, all the flirting with the dangers, all his neons, all his exhibits, events, press podcasts, ebooks, news, and you can find out where his next show is and everything on his website. Check him out, Instagram. I just followed you um, so I can stay connected as well because your stuff is so amazing. I can't wait to see one of your live exhibits. So once again, thank you so much for being here and everyone out there have an amazing day. Thank you. Bye.